Welcome. You are listening to another message from Lighthouse Church in Secunda. For more information about us, please log on to www.lighthousechurch.co.za. Hope you enjoy the message. Good morning, my name is Derek. I'm one of the pastors here. I am... I don't know what it was like when you were growing up, but when I was a small kid, my dad would say to me, go, wash your hands. Oh, good Lord. And you go through and you wash your hands, but you don't really do a good job. This, my dad would walk in and go, the soap is still dry. The tap hasn't been opened. What did you do? Uh, so I washed my hands. Now, he didn't tell me that once. And then all of a sudden, I had a, I had a, a habit, and I was a committed hand washer. Now I walk around with a little hand sanitizer. When you see me doing this, it's not that, you know, some kung fu stuff. It's, I'm putting hand sanitizer on, um, not because I've, shaking, because I've been shaking your hands, because I like cleaning my hands, I like having clean hands. It is after many, many days of my dad saying to me, go wash your hands, that I then developed the habit to wash my hands. And I hope you wash your hands as well, because I see some of you have got your booger hooks hooked in really deep sometimes, and then, then someone looks at you, and then all of a sudden it goes from this to, um, oh, yeah, I've spotted you. And then you come and you do this, and that's when I'm like, hey... Thank you, Jesus, for knuckles. Today we're going to learn that. Not about keeping... Talking about... You know, you're going to hear stuff this morning that is not going to be the latest, greatest revelation that has never been heard before by most of you. I'm hoping that today is going to be a re-preach of what you already know so that what you hear consistently and continuously, you start developing that habit the way I did with washing my hands. I'm hoping that you're going to hear it, the word spoken today, and it's going to be something that you're going to go, I know this. You may sit here this morning going, wow, that's fantastic. But I'm hoping that you're going to hear this, and it's not going to be the first time you hear it, so that you'll start practicing what you've been taught. Because sometimes as Christians, we do the silliest things. We do the things that we shouldn't do, knowing we shouldn't do it. And I'm not going to talk to you today about your sin. This is a shorter meeting. So today, after collecting specific scripture and compiling it all together, and I'm going to read it with much passion and enthusiasm, I'm going to deliver this message, and you're going to go, now my life will be different because I've heard this message. When I go visit other churches, I teach them many things. I do leadership training. I do eldership training. Then I do training on how to be a good congregation attendee, not even a member. Sometimes you've got to go and teach people how to do things. It says in Scripture, they don't do it because they're doof. It's biblical. Well, Scripture says they... No, anyway. So what I do in churches that I go to for the first time and I do training, I have to tell people when to say amen. Because sometimes they forget. Not now, Jeff. Come on, man. When I do this and I teach churches this, it's the build-up. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, when I say something good, you say amen, because that's you saying, actually, I agree with that. We're going to become a verbal church. We're not going to sit there and smile at each other and go, you're going to say amen. I'm going to pray. This will get better. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Holy Spirit, I pray this morning, come and anoint my mouth to do the work and to present the assignment that you've given me to present to this wonderful church. I pray, Lord God, that everything that is from me will fall on deaf ears, but that which is from the throne room of God, that which you have spoken to me, Jesus, I will deliver this morning, not through eloquent speech, but through your power, Holy Spirit. We will be different by 11 a.m. this morning, and our lives will change because the word of God has been read to us. Things will now be different. Amen. Amen. We're doing practical Christianity, the book of James. It's the nuts and bolts, if you haven't figured it out, it's the nuts and bolts of Christianity. How to practically be a Christian. I met with a man this week, he said to me, he's 40 years old, he says to me, your daughter is adulting better than I am. I agreed with him. She's acting more mature and she's more responsible than he is. And I think it's because of the things he's been taught. Practical Christianity, how do we do this thing? 
And this is going to be one of those very practical Sundays where you're going to learn how to do things. Or I'm going to remind you that there are things you need to do. And then when you leave here, by 11, don't worry, I'm not preaching that long. But by 11 a.m., you're going to be different. You're going to behave differently. Okay. James chapter 3, verse 3. If we put bits into the mouths of horses, bits, it's like a bar that they put in front of the horse's mouth, right at her back, and then you can steer the horse. It says, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. So wherever the mouth goes, the body goes. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. Yes, Scripture tells us about the power of the tongue. Now James addresses the danger of the tongue. Verse 6, the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, straining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird or reptile and sea creature, even your children, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. I was going to have you all stick out your tongues. But then there'll be those few of you, you didn't really brush it well this morning and you got that that furry thing going. (laughs) Then it goes on to speak of the fruit of the tongue. With the tongue, with it, we bless our Lord and Father. With it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce fruits? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good, con- his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. You see, the tongue reveals your heart, but it also defines your path. So when Scripture says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth will speak. What's in you will come out. Now, the danger is, ladies, and I'm going to share this with you, and husbands are going to go, oh, no, the secret's out. You cannot say things to people and go, oh, I'm just joking because it was offensive. Now, the husbands are going to have a wonderful chat with their wives in the car. Because we say stupid things. I've tried to stop. My wife looks down. We say stupid things. And then we we realize we've offended someone. We go, I'm only kidding. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. You have to start work looking at what's in your heart. I I have a... Paul writes in Scripture about the thorn in the flesh. I have a thorn in the flesh. I need to share this with you this morning. And it's a bit of a me sharing some of my weakness with you. You can't hold it against me. But I have this thing with people who chew loudly. For some other reason, some people, and I'm not sure if it's, and I know it's none of you, but it's people that I've met outside of the local context. I don't know. I know that open cavities amplify sound, so I don't know if there's an emptiness near the mouth that allows sound to be amplified, that as they chew, I've heard people make noise chewing marshmallows. When I do marriage counseling, all I do is I give the husband and the wife each an Omar Rask, you know, a nice big biscuit. And I get them to chew it. One, first the husband, then the wife. And if they don't complain about each other's noises, they're going to be fine. <laughs> and sometimes I'll say inappropriate things to my family. And then I realize that was not a good move. And then I go, huh, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Because there's something in me that doesn't enjoy it and therefore it comes out. This, so I, I deal with it. I think I've overcome it. I've got small ear plugs that I put in my ears. Not really. There's something inside me that bubbles out because it's something that's brewing in me. And it's a silly illustration, but that is literally the only sin in my life, so I can share it openly with you. 
Whatever is in you will always come out. If you've got a problem with what you say, you've got to change what's inside. Well, I can't help myself. I'm always swearing. No, no, no. I've never heard you swear, which means you've just got a self-control problem. It's an awkward amen, I know, but I had to get it in. We have to learn to control our mouths because we have to start looking at what's inside of us. I love it. I love spending time with you in stressful situations. It's like watching a person walking on the beach. There's no issue. Then you watch people run on the beach. Go and Google or search on YouTube epic fails on the beach. You watch people run. They fall for no reason. They walk fine, but as soon as there's a bit of tension to run, they bail. It's beautiful to watch. We, ca- we have that sometimes when there's a bit of stress in our lives, and then guys are with me, and they actually don't know how to express themselves. They're like... <laughs> Like my, my, my cat before the Rottweiler got it. And then it's over. Because what's inside us is bubbling out. What bubbles out of you when a person of a different color drives badly in front of you? It'll quickly reveal, oh no, I'm not a racist, I don't see color. No, that means you're blind. I see color. Because God wants me to see color. That's why he made us different colors. It's obvious, eh? But your color doesn't offend me. Your bad driving might. I don't care what color you are. If you drive badly, I'm going to calm myself. (laughs) Whatever's in you is going to always reveal itself. We need to work on what's inside. Because our mouths will direct us. See, as much as the rudder in a ship steers the ship, it's who's changing the course with the rudder, rudder. It's the pilot. Change what's in you so that what comes out of you is pure and good and suitable for a Christian to walk in. We've never done it and I never will do it. A lot of churches, what they do is they interview children over Christmas or Easter or Mother's Day or Father's Day. And then we, we interview kids. We have done it before and we made sure as leaders' kids, we were shocked. We interview the one leader's child and say, so what does your mommy do? Just for Mother's Day, I think. What does your mommy do? My mommy sits at home and does nothing all day and sleeps until dad gets home. Then she looks busy. (laughs) I said to them, you keep that. That's gold. That's gold. We keep that. That's for bloopers, end of the year. Because kids, they just say whatever's in them. So we, we try to guide them. We say, listen. When people come over, you must behave nicely. When we go to the church, well, I see people, they, they see the pastor, they pull them a little bit closer. Now, now I'm intimidating, but I'm not that scary. It's because we're scared what's going to come out of our children's mouths. I think sometimes we're scared what's going to come out of our mouths. But if we change the way we feel and the way we process things, what comes out of our mouths becomes powerful. It becomes life-changing. Psalm, sorry, sorry, Proverbs 12, verse 18. I'm going to read from the message. It says, A rash language cuts and maims, but there is healing in the words of the wise. Rash language, hard language, cuts and maims. How do you speak to your children? You can't call your kids doff. I don't care if it's a joke. You can't insult your kids. You can't come up with stupid nicknames for your children. Oh, it's just funny. So I call my my youngest one, I call her punk. But she knows what it stands for because she's my pumpkin. She's my pumpkin, but she's 13. She doesn't want her dad going, hello, my pumpkin. Oh, it's my pumpkin. Because she doesn't get happy. I call her punk. She goes, that works for me. She's my little punk. She's my pumpkin. I'd never in my life say something derogatory about my children. Any more than God would say anything derogatory about you. Speak well of your kids. I don't care how old they are. Speak well of your parents. Oh, my parents. If they fed you and clothed you and kept a roof over your head, say thank you. No, shush, man. How do you speak about your boss? 
Are you maiming your boss? Are you maiming your company? Which I mean, in your words, are you physically destroying the company that you work for because you speak trash all the time? Are you maiming your family? Are you maiming your church? Speak life. It's not a request. It's an instruction from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. Amen. Amen. This is hard for me. Amen. Amen. Our tongues hold us back. We need to start learning. And I'm going I'm to touch on this morning about the four influences that we have in our lives that affect our speech. I love it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18. The four people that speak over your life, you, others, the devil, I'm not saying you guys are the devil group, but I'm just saying they're four groups. So, You, others, the devil, and God are the four voices we're going to have in our life. You get to affect all four of them. I'll show you where. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented this saying. John is saying something. I need to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? But Jesus answered him. Jesus says something. Let it be so now. For this it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. John speaks. The third party. Jesus speaks. That's the you, the first person. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, who knows the Father speaking, with whom I am well pleased. You have your own voice. Jesus speaks life over his direction. You have the voice of others. It's John saying, I don't think it's a good idea. You have the voice of the Father in heaven. Isn't it wonderful if he could just stay there? However, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Because Jesus, to fulfill his ministry, had to go through the temptations we deal with so he could have them dealt with. But at the same time, he had to expose the devil to the power of his speech. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said, the devil came and said, the devil came and said, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Let me tell you this, friends. Whatever lie the enemy is throwing at you, the Lord God has already spoken the truth over you. Whatever the lie is that the enemy is barking or vomiting over you, the truth of God has already been spoken over you. The Father has already said, heaven's open. The Father has already said, this is my son. The devil comes and goes, if you are the son. As soon as God makes a declaration of your life, the devil will come and say, do you really think so? As soon as you feel that you're called to ministry, as soon as you feel that you're called to lead a life group, as soon as you feel that you should go and share a testimony, as soon as you feel that you should go and pray at a hospital, as soon as you feel God saying something, the enemy immediately, immediately steps in and goes, come on, not you. You're too shy to share a testimony in front, and it's not such a big deal. Dead get raised all the time. It's not such a big deal. Cancer gets dealt with all the time. Rather not, that's the voice of the enemy speaking over your life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Who are we listening to? Who is affecting our ears? God speaks to you. He says, go and pray at the hospital. The devil then says, no, but you can't pray because you're sick. The devil says to you, go and speak to that lady. She looks down. The devil says to you, no, but you suffer from depression. What gives you the right to speak to someone else? The devil says, eat this bread. Jesus says, no. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you're going to eat the bread of the enemy, that's the direction you're going to grow in. Jesus says, mouth, what comes from the mouth of God is our daily bread. Are we together on this one? Whatever he speaks over our lives 
will direct our lives if we allow him to speak to us. You see, if he influences us, if God is constantly speaking to us, the speech we have over our lives will change. I spent some time with an elderly lady in the week, and she says, she says something silly, but she's just joking. I don't laugh, because it wasn't funny. She goes, you must excuse me, I suspect I'm just becoming senile. And as much as I may want to agree, she's standing next to a lady who's 10 years older than her. One is 67, the other one's 77. The 77 year old, this little chick is full of life. I call her little chick because she's honestly this big. She's full of life and she's enthusiastic. She's coming and stop speaking negative, let's go. And she's up and down the stairs. The one who's 67 is starting to believe the, no, I can't say that, the rubbish that she's speaking over herself. The 77 year old's believing the same things what they're speaking over themselves, what they're trusting God for, what they speak over themselves is what's from inside, but what comes out starts affecting us on the outside as well. Oh, I'm so sick and tired. It's funny how you're always sick and tired. I'm so unhappy at my... I think that's why when Jesus says to the Father, I'm going to choose a part of the body that I will be the head of the, of the body because I can't afford my bride to have the mouth. Because I'll say stupid things. So when it comes to the body, the body, Jesus is the head because he's the mouth. But when it comes to us leading, when it comes to us leading our families and in our careers and in our jobs, what voices are you listening to? You're listening to God? Yeah, I know. God said that. I, I have people share the craziest stuff with me. Not you people, people from other churches. They share stuff with me. I go, that's not Jesus. Yeah, God said I must do that. That's not Jesus. Well, how can you be so sure? Because I know what his voice sounds like. Well, how, do you, how can you be sure? Well, he speaks to me every day. Now, if you've been in this church for more than six weeks, you've heard me say this. Read the Bible every day. It's the bread of life. I had someone come to me recently and said, you're right. My life has changed. What did you do? I read my Bible and I pray every day. I know. But you have to get yourselves a squiggle bubble. Do you have a squiggle bubble? Let me teach you. This is not my squiggle bubble. My family knows what my squiggle bubble is. This is my church bubble. My squiggle bubble. And you must have a squiggle bubble. Say with me. I'm going to get myself a squiggle bubble. Do you want to write it down? You can go to PA and say, Can I have a squiggle bubble? How dare you? <laughs> They're going to know you from Lighthouse anyway. I sit, I read scripture, and I look, and I go, I'm looking for the words of the promises of Jesus over my life. I'm, I'm looking for the parts that when I open the Bible, it's going to speak to me. And as I'm reading scripture, I make a little squiggle next to the lines that's God speaking to me where I can say, thank you, God, for this. When it says in Scripture, I'm the head, not the tail, I put a squiggle there. And I can page through my Bible, and I look for squiggles when I need to be uplifted. I page through the Bible when I want to pray. I open up the Bible, and I just pray through my squiggles. My squiggles are the times when God has spoken to me, and I've made a note of it. It's a little scribble there. I think it started off with me writing something, but I write so ugly when I went back to it, I said, no, it's a squiggle. You've got to Bible, and it means you're going to have to get a printed Bible, because you can't squiggle on your phone, and you get yourself a printed Bible, they're not that expensive, and you get a pen, and you start opening the word, and you say, I'm going to have God speak over me, because life and death is in the power of the tongue, this is God's mouth, I'm going to have that influence this, and as that influence this, this will influence this, and this is going to direct me, I'll speak life over every situation. I speak life over my president of this country. Do you know scripture says this? That God gives us our leaders. He then says in, in his word that all good gifts come from God. I'm battling to get those two sentences to join. But, but I will speak life over our president until God changes something. I'll speak life over the presidency, over our parliament. Stop talking trash about our municipality. 
We speak life over situations. You start speaking life over your family. You speak life over your marriage. You're thinking, but you've said this before at some stage, and you're still not doing it. You're still not doing it. Speak over your friends. Speak over your bosses. Speak over your church. Have you ever seen there's a pattern in Scripture when the Spirit of God moves? Genesis chapter 1. It says the Spirit hovered across, over the waters. The Spirit hovered over the chaos of land. And then Jesus said, let there be light. We know that all things were created by Jesus. Jesus created through speech. Right? Jesus spoke and life was born. Start of his ministry, actually. He makes man. He speaks. Jesus is baptized. Great move of God. Greatest ministry ever. Jesus is baptized. The Father speaks. It's the beginning of all creation. Jesus speaks. The beginning of Jesus' ministry. The Father speaks. Then Pentecost comes. And the Holy Spirit speaks. It says in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, when, they were, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And, so, and that's church. Church is a good thing. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. There's a sound from heaven. The first sound from heaven is when Jesus says, let there be light. The second sound from heaven that we hear when God speaks is God's, the Father saying, this is my son. The third sound from heaven is when the Holy Spirit starts moving. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. As he gave them utterance. The move of God has to start with him speaking. In Genesis, he speaks over us. We see with Jesus, he speaks to us. With the book of Acts chapter 2, he speaks through us. Tongues of fire. God's saying, I need to change your tongues. They pray in tongues. They speak in tongues. God says, the world will change when your mouth changes. Because he wants to speak through us. We're all praying for another Pentecost. Oh, Lord, let it be. Let 3,000 get saved. Do you know statistics? 3,000 people get converted to Christianity. I think it's every 18 minutes. That is 3,000 people saved in the world in a day. And we pray for that, we'd have to go backwards. God says, I'm going to change your speech because that will change the world. Start having power over your tongue as you have God change what's inside. Change the way you speak. It's going to continue to change the world. I love in scripture in James 3, it says, from the same, verse 10 says, from the same mouth um, comes blessing and curses. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Then it carries on verse 12. Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? I was about 10 years old. We had a party. An old party. So I'm bored before the party, before everyone's going to get there. Obviously, we're going to have a braai. And I go through, and my sister had made a beautiful salad. Now I'm hungry. I was hungry when I was born. I suspect I'll be hungry when I'm dying. I, I see this beautiful salad full of these big black grapes. Now, if you eat four of them, the bowl looks empty. If I eat half of them, they know I've stolen it. If I take everything, you get away with it. Basic principles of effective theft. So this is not career guidance. I take all these beautiful, fat, juicy grapes. And as I've collected, there are about eight of them. My sister walks in. Hide the evidence. They are the surfest olives ever. <laughs> and I stand there. And I'm chewing them because fortunately they were pitless. They were, they'd been destoned. And I stood there, I went around the corner, I ate them. I thought, who the hell? What? 
Why would you make someone suffer by putting those balls of salt? Jesus, help me. <laughs> I had about four liters of water that often. I thought my kidneys were shrinking. I had so much salt in. And my sister looked at me. She smiled. I think I walked around the whole day. She said, what's wrong? I don't know. Uh, she goes, she little bugger, you ate all the olives. I thought they were rotten grapes. I thought there was something wrong with them. She goes, couldn't you see the difference? Not at all. That's the problem with us as Christians. Sometimes people don't notice the difference in our appearance, and they don't notice the difference either because of what's in our mouths. We need to be different. We cannot look like grapes and perform like olives. We have to be different. The difference comes with the way we speak. How do you speak to your family? How do you speak to your children? How do you speak about your boss? How do you speak to your boss? I really don't care if you swear or not. I was just having fun with you. Saying about speaking life. Speaking life. Your children may be sick. Speak life over them. It's powerful prayers. It's declarations. It's not lies. It's not living in a dream world. You're battling to find a job. You start thanking Jesus for your job. You start working out your budget on how you're going to tithe. You start speaking to people about, I'm excited about my job. What is it? I don't know God's kept it a secret. Where is it? I don't know. He's a God of mystery. But I have a job. I'm the best at my job. You may be sitting here this morning, you're single and you're frustrated. Start walking around. I am the wife, well, I'm the husband of an amazing spouse because God has called me to that. As opposed to moping around in your flippant pajamas, but you don't even have pajamas on. You're just so used to looking that way that your hair hasn't been brushed in four weeks and you've got the happiness of a flippant dead goat all over your face. That's why you're still single. Oh, that was mean. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. Speech. Some of you need to tell your faces that you are happy. Change the way you speak. Say it with me. I'm going to change the way I speak. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. That's speech. 18, give thanks. That's speech. In all circumstances for this, oh my gosh. You want to know what the will of God is? There it is. There's the will of God. Verse 16 again. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God. Then he says, but don't quench the spirit. Don't be a wet nappy. That's what it says. Don't be a wet nappy. So if praying without ceasing and rejoicing always is the will of God, then he says, don't quench the spirit. Don't be a wet nappy. How do we quench the spirit? I'm so glad you asked that. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such that is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Oh, here we go. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. It's speech and speech and speech. Be kind to one another. Speak nicely to each other. Be tender-hearted. Forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. What's on the inside will bubble out. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. How do we honor God in our speech? What is the will of God that we rejoice, we pray without ceasing? How do we quench Him? People say to you, how are you doing? I'm <laughs> How your kids? <laughs> how your family? <laughs> then they say to you, what church do you go to? <laughs> when we change the way we speak, the world's going to go, there's something different. Your situation is going to change when you change the way you speak. I'm unemployable. You're right. I'm broke. Bang on the money. You win 50 rand. 
oh, my wife's going to leave me. I don't blame her. And then I'll wrap up with this. Not everything will happen instantly. Jesus gives us two examples in Genesis 1. He says, let there be light. There's light. I love it when scientists talk about the Big Bang Theory because they're right. I think when Jesus said, let there be light, there was one movie, so Big Bang. (laughs) And then he says, and let the earth sprout forth green plants. He doesn't say let the green plants appear. Some things will be declared and will change instantly. Some things will be declared and will grow progressively. If you haven't seen the little things grow yet, keep declaring it. Your marriage may be in trouble. Your finances may be in trouble. Your health may be a disaster. You you may feel as though you want to quit. I'm telling you, there's some things you're going to speak over. It's going to change in an instant. There are going to be other things that you're going to speak over, and you're not going to see any change the first day. But you keep declaring it. Some things will happen in an instant. Other things will sprout forth a bit slower. We don't stop speaking the power of God over situations. We pray for the sick at every opportunity. We pray for our family. Dads, lay hands on your kids and pray for them. Wives, lay hands on your husbands in a gentle way and pray for them and love them. (laughs) Stop talking about your problems. Stop talking about your problems as though they're your problems. They can't be God's to deal with and yours to gossip about. If you want to keep your problems, stop moaning about them and you can tell everyone. But if you want them dealt with, you hand them over to Jesus and say, God, I'm going to hand them over to you. I'm going to speak about your goodness because I will rejoice always and pray without ceasing because that is the will that God has for my life. But I can't gossip and rejoice always because the same source cannot have salt and fresh water. We're going to make some declarations this morning. Would you mind standing with me, please? We're going to make declarations this morning. They, you're going to have them pop on the screen over here. So Ferdi, well, you know Ferdi's on the sound desk, but he's engaged to a Portuguese girl called Karina. So he's Ferdinando's. <laughs> I think it's very good. <laughs> Karina says he's hot. No, wait, I'm not doing comedy this morning. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Keep it there, Fadi. Somebody has quoted this to me before, and I said, Really, give birth to a baby kudu, please. <laughs> what, what, what scripture is saying to us here, whatever you are facing, you are going to make it because God's going to equip you for it. Whatever you're facing, whatever challenge you're encountering, whatever sea you're walking through, God will equip you. He will set you up. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We'll say it in chorus. We'll say it with passion. We'll say it now together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't get too excited yet. Let's go for the next one. If your declarations determined whether you went to heaven or not, you're all in trouble. You know, this is a powerful thing. We need to understand we're forgiven. I'm free. What the devil's throwing at me about my past, I laugh at him. He's got to remember the stuff I don't. He can keep track of my history. I get to forget stuff. I'm clearing up a whole lot of space about my history to make space for scripture. I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Let's go for the next one. I'm strong in Jesus and I have great endurance and patience. I'm strong in Jesus and I have great endurance and Did you just pray for patience? Sure. Okay. Next one. Now we... You, 
you got to get this one. See, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He gives me, we read the scripture for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We can recite it all really well, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. But when we go, God has not given me a spirit of fear. Boom. You're going to do the boom. He gives me power. Boom. Love. No, it's got to end there. And self-discipline. Boom. Because this has become something of who we are. I'm full of power, and I'm full of love, and I'm full of self-discipline. Why? Because it's the spirit God has given me. Why? Because I'm not going to have a spirit of fear. Why? Boom. So let's do that. Whoa, whoa. And clap. Let's do this. God has not given me a spirit of fear. Okay, I'll read you do the boom, okay? God has not given me a spirit of fear. He gives me power. Love and self-discipline. Now live that way, act that way, speak that way. Hi, caramba. Let's do the next one, Ferdinandos. God provides for me abundantly. Look, oh, where does it say that in scripture? You'll notice the thing in brackets, that's the boom. God provides for me abundantly. We're going to be going to double services very soon. You'll see there are not too many open seats, and we're in shutdown. Boom. Boom. Okay. That's not scripture, man, Jeff. Keep quiet. (laughs) We're going double services. The kids who keep quiet in the the meeting, they're going to have to go to the first meeting, warm it up for the guys who go in the second meeting. We're going to sift this this morning. God provides for me abundantly. Because let me share this with you. He's not giving you just enough to scrape by so that you can live like a church mouth. He, he's not giving you just enough that you don't die. He's a God of abundance. Oh, that sounds like the prosperity message. It's not my fault. God provides for me abundantly. Next one. I have perfect peace because I trust in him. Perfect peace because I trust in Him. You see, the problem is not that we don't have faith in God. The problem is that we have, don't have faith in God to do something. It's like, yeah, I believe He's there, but do you believe that He'll do something? I don't know. That's called lack of faith. That's possibly a spirit of unbelief that you're harboring. So every spirit of unbelief you leave now in Jesus' name. So I'm going to do mass deliverance here as well. But I have perfect peace because I trust in Him. I have peace. I don't have to worry. I'm allowed to, if I want to. I have peace. It will freak the enemy out. You're sick. I have perfect peace because I trust in him. No, no, but you must worry about your finances. I have perfect peace because I trust in him. No, but your marriage is falling apart. (laughs) I have perfect peace because I trust in him. Let's go to the next one. I prosper even as my soul prospers. No, that was so slap. I can't say chat anymore. I was told I can't. But that is slap chat. I prosper even as my soul prospers. Shaka laka. Next one. Have you run out of them, Fadi? Come on, man. Try harder. Let's make declarations over our families. Let's make declarations over our health. Let's start making declarations over our work situations. Our government, our people, our friends, our family. Let's pray. King Jesus, you're awesome in every single way and I honor you, Lord God. Thank you that your word is the only encouragement that we need. We thank you that your word is the boom in our life when the enemy wants to whisper and vomit into our lives. Your word is the boom that shakes the gates of hell. Your word is the one that sets us free. Give us a hunger for your word. Lord God, stir us, King Jesus. Lord, I pray that we'll learn how to speak your word. We'll learn how to speak the declarations that we are supposed to make. Our mouths will, our mouths will be full of what you have promised us. Release it over our lives, Lord God. So I speak over situations this morning. I speak over your, if your finances are in a dismal state this morning. I can see if you've got your hands raised already, you keep them raised and let the Holy Spirit work. But if your finances are in a bit of mess, no one's looking around, you put your hands up, I'm going to pray with you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come. 
Holy Spirit, come. I declare that as they raise their hands, that your finances will prosper even as your soul prospers. You will prosper abundantly based on the promises that God has made in His Word. You will have financial wisdom and understanding, knowing that God has called you not to be poor. God has called you not to suffer. I speak of a businessman this morning that millions will be released so that God can use you to become a conduit for the kingdom to expand. We release that in Jesus' name. You have health issues. You have health issues. You need to raise your hands. We're going to start declaring healing. We're going to have words of knowledge shared and you can get prayed for twice. But you're standing here and you have faith that God needs to touch your life. Ladies, there are some of you standing here this morning that you have problems with with ovarian cysts and uterine problems. I want to pray for you this morning, right where you're standing. You're trusting God. Let's declare life. Health in Jesus' name over every person raising their hands, trusting for health. Health in Jesus' name. I command you bodies to heal now in Jesus' name. Heal now in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for all marriages because all marriages get shaken at some stage. So I speak to every married couple represented here. You could be here by yourself. I speak over your spouse and over you. I speak life. Scripture says that it is good for a man to have a wife. We thank you that all good gifts come from you, Lord God. I pray strengthening of marriages. Jesus, you're the only one that can help us. I speak life over our marriages, over our spouse, Lord. Bring healing. We trust you, our King, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Boom.